Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope you are all doing well. I really do hope that. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's Chelsea news video, where really, it's going to be less news. I do want to give a shout out to match winner, Jeremy Borga, who's absolutely killing it still playing for Sir Swallow, but I want to talk about Chelsea's death run, the gauntlet. The next three home games that could be so, so decisive in league position, Champions League position, I guess. I was going to say future, maybe. Catch my drift. And perhaps just general feel-good factor moving forwards. Lots to talk about there, of course. I'm not going to do like match previews, which I might actually do for these games in terms of statistical previews, like I used to, the kind of tactical stuff I'm in, you know? But I want to talk about the matches generally, how I think it's going to go, if I can even speculate, and talk about what it would mean if Chelsea won them all or lost them all, etc. Before we get into today's content, I want to urge you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. We are so nearly close to 40,000 subscribers, an immense milestone for my humble, little and relatively new channel. So please do subscribe, hit that bell and notifications icon, why not like the video and follow me on Instagram to hang out with me on Instagram Live. My talking might fail a little bit today because I'm a little bit under the weather. Alright, before we talk about this gauntlet that Chelsea have at Stamford Bridge, <laughs> And there's a lot to talk about there. Let's talk about Jeremy Boga. Scored a 90th minute winner for Sassuolo playing in Syria again on the weekend. Superb scenes indeed. They're playing away at Spal. The thing is, right, he's like scoring super goals, last minute winners, dribbling, nutmegging. A seventh goal of the season with a few assists. Not loads, but it's, you know, it's more than Willian, and he's showing that he can basically do things that the Chelsea, the current Chelsea team dynamic can't do, like shoot from 30 plus yards um, and just get a match win out of nowhere in the last minute. Kind of all these things that Chelsea need at the moment in the first team. And if you haven't seen my videos on them, I suggest you go back and look at them. But we have a buyback clause on Jeremy Boga for like 12.6 million pounds. It's an absolute no brainer. It's the ultimate Pedro replacement. I mean, you know, we can speculate what's gonna happen to Willian in terms of getting maybe Jaden Sancho or someone, I know I should stop dropping the name so much. But for me, Boga back in the squad is a no-brainer. And it's nice to see him doing bits still out in Italy and basically honing his skills as a footballer. And he should come back quite the player. Right, let's talk about it. In the next three games Chelsea have in all competitions, they're all home games at Stamford Bridge. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I do not know anymore. Chelsea seem to have their best performances away from home. <laughs> But Chelsea have Man United at home in the Premier League, followed by Tottenham Hotspur in the Premier League, and Bayern Munich as well in the Champions League. Oh my goodness. Like I said previously, I might actually do proper tactical previews for these games, which I think were interesting and you guys liked. Get down in the comments and let me know if you'd like to see more of those. But I want to talk about the games generally in this video. Um, obviously, the two Premier League games before the Champions League games are both six pointers, really. Both Tottenham Hotspur and Manchester United will both massively fancy Chelsea's fourth spot to qualify in the Champions League. And they'll know even if just one of them beat us, the other one wins their other game, they're like in business. Do you know what I mean? And you've got people like Chris Wilder saying, we want Chelsea's spot as well in interviews, in press conferences. Now, Sheffield United, Sheffield United, promoted side, you know, Chris Wilder, very, very good coach, but not a glamorous coach, so you don't really think of him. Do you know what I mean? They're promoted, they've just come up. It's well into February, and they're fifth. They're looking at this spot, and he's talking about it. I think I have to stop sleeping on him. I have to take, I have to take Sheffield United seriously for a Champions League spot now. I mean, you'd be dumb not to, right? So there's that. Don't think anyone ever has to worry about Arsenal. But Man United, Tottenham, <laughs> and Sheffield United. I'm gonna put a pin in Sheffield United just for this video. Although I probably shouldn't be because this is the definition of sleeping on Sheffield United. Jose Mourinho will massively love to knock Chelsea off that fourth spot and take it and take it off Frank Lampard, the master student dynamic thing. Do you know what I mean? Solskjaer would love to do it generally to save his job. <laughs> <laughs> Both these teams have made January reinforcements. Steven Bergwijn for Tottenham Hotspur looks like an absolute baller. Scored that amazing goal for them. Bruno Fernandes for Manchester United. We all know he's an excellent player and probably just what Manchester United need. Oh yeah, and they got Odi and Agarlo as well. Basically, the, both teams did business in January. Chelsea didn't. Chelsea wanted to. You know the story. Go back and watch the transfer videos. And I'm wondering who's going to be favourites in these games. The thing is, right... 
The first one, Manchester United. Chelsea lost 4-0. 4-0 at Old Trafford in the opening game of the season. But let's be real, I think most United fans would admit that was no way near a 4-0 game. Chelsea dominated in large spells in open play. They got slapped about on the counter-attack. But even with that dynamic, it still flattered Manchester United massively. And like I said, most Man United fans would probably admit to that. And Chelsea have lost to Manchester United at home at this season in the cup. They got knocked out 2-1. Obviously that amazing goal from Marcus Rashford. A little bit of an anomaly that. Um, Marcus Rashford of course is now injured. So he can't punish Chelsea. Still, I'm starting to think, right? Remember how under Conte, Chelsea were really, really good first season. And, you know, they're even when they dropped off in the second season, they still showed they were good at times. Arsenal, Wenger's Arsenal, became a bogey team to Chelsea for the first time in years. I don't know what happened. Like, Conte just couldn't beat Arsenal. I was at the cup final. I saw a few of the games where he just kept losing. So we just couldn't beat Arsenal. We couldn't beat Arsenal. It was weird. Not Chelsea manager-wise, but I actually feel like since Solskjaer has come into United, they're a bit of a bogey team for Chelsea. I know Ross Barkley scored that last minute winner last season to make it 2-2. They slapped us about 4-0, they've knocked us out of the cup. I swear they've beaten us again as well. So I'm a little bit worried about that. The thing is, I'm, I'm almost more confident about the Tottenham game, although I feel like they could comfortably sit back at Stamford Bridge and that will really infuriate Chelsea. Obviously, they played too open. We played the 3 4 3 away at their place. Comprehensive tactical masterclass 2 0 win. That, I'm not sure that will happen again. It will be really, really interesting to see him whether Frank Lampard goes for a 3 4 3 again to try and beat Jose, because Jose will probably expect that. So that's going to be a weird game of mind chess between the two managers but I am oddly more confident against Tottenham than I am Man United because I think Tottenham are a better team but Tottenham have been playing badly of late the last two games they've won in like the cup and the league they were both outplayed or they're outplayed in both games and they somehow robbed the result so I feel like maybe Chelsea you know if they don't pick up form in the game before I think Chelsea are poised to maybe win the game against Tottenham but I am worried about Manchester United man because they like I said they seem to have this juju over us at the moment but hopefully Chelsea's home form will sort out and even in like a, a draw you take a, maybe a draw in both or a draw against United maybe a win against Tottenham but like I said I'll probably do match previews for these games properly talk about players opposition threats and tactical stuff you know what I mean so I'll release videos on those and then of course there's Bayern München the old foe when Chelsea drew them in the Champions League Shout out to the Bayern admin who, who like tweeted an image of muted words, Drogba in 2012, so, you know, good humour there. But at the end of the day, Bayern Munich are an absolute machine. Serge Gnabry, Robert Lewandowski up front, there's a whole host of players that can hurt you in that team. We really just have to hope the emotion carries Chelsea. Now, the thing is about these Chelsea youngsters, the fact how they can get emotional in games can be both good and bad. It can make them rally together against like Ajax away and do a really good performance and a 1-0 win or it can make them just collapse, concede goals, score goals do you know what I mean? It can go mental so hopefully Frank Lampard can get inside their heads hopefully there's an amazing atmosphere at Stamford Bridge and Chelsea can you know pull something out of the bag like I said Chelsea do play better away from home so to get through that tie I'm almost thinking maybe like a score draw at home and maybe a win away in the Allianz Arena. Do you know what I mean? But the fact is, to be honest, I'll reiterate that I've said stuff throughout, you know, the last few weeks. Chelsea's European campaign this season has already been a success. They've qualified out of the group stages at the expense of last season's semi-finalists in Ajax. You know, they were underdogs, they did it, they've got the finances from reaching the next round. No one really expects much from Lampard. We've got a really, really hard opponent. Chelsea can quite happily go out and sort of bow their heads and be like, right, we come back stronger next year. But to be honest, provided they put in a good performance and make a contest of it, that's cool. So I think if Chelsea get a draw at home to Bayern Munich, you know, they'll feel confident going into the next game. No pressure on their shoulders, just a game of football. You win it, you go through. Exciting, who knows, a higher score draw and they go through on away goals. Do you see what I mean? So it wouldn't really matter if they don't win at home. It's just if they don't lose, really, or don't get slapped about massively. So huge games indeed. I am going to do previews to these games. Certainly the Bayern Munich and Tottenham. Hey, maybe even Man United. I'm going to do it. But I want to get your thoughts on this situation. How many points are Chelsea going to get from this? In fact, get down in the comment section below. Let me know. Win, loss, draw against Man United. 
Tottenham and Bayern Munich. Get down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. What do you think of Jeremy Boga? Is he a no-brainer to bring home to Stamford Bridge? Let me know that as well. Get down in the comment section. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. If you've not yet done it, please do. And like the video if you've enjoyed the content. Why not share my content with your friends if they're Chelsea fans? Or maybe even just not Chelsea fans. People you think might just like the channel. So like I said, so close to 40,000. Really appreciate all your support, everyone that's helping me. Very humble. Oh yeah, follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. That's it from me, everyone. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby